There was a time when this toy poodle didn't really like toys at all. Boy, things have changed. Get that thing. <laughs> I think we should call this class grade fun, rather than grade one. Because I, I have a lot of fun. And I know Kale has fun <laughs> tormenting me uh, during class. I don't know how many times I, I had to be the demo dog. Yeah, but I had to like tell you what to do while you were the demo dog today because you weren't like reading my, my mind? mind. Yeah. Mm, that is a problem if I'm not reading her mind. Yeah, you should just know these things. We need to be internally connected. Yeah. Okay, I don't really know what that means, but there's obviously some message here. <laughs> At least you got that part of it. He's getting better some, sometimes, some things. We're good at vlogging. We're really good at vlogging, <laughs> like the best. We wanted to take a minute today to talk about um, Hippie Shake and how we got her to enjoy playing with toys, and more specifically, how we got Hippie to tug, because it was no easy task. Mm -hmm. But when we first got Hippie, um, she didn't really love toys. She wouldn't engage, she wouldn't play with like engaging toys, so like a tug, or even like a soft frisbee, anything where we'd... Well, she was interested in them, but she wasn't really interested in like um, maintaining attention on them for yeah. a long time. Um, and I think because she was so small too, I think she often felt intimidated with um, when we would bend over to like tug with her, yeah. um, because she would play with them a little bit more individually, but wasn't as encouraged to play with them when it involved us. Yeah, and I think those toys, uh, those toys that involve you as well, can be really helpful uh, for you know um, all sorts of skill sets and, and building a relationship. There's all rewarding. sorts of things. Yeah, for rewarding. Uh, you know whatever behavior you want it's also really motivating and, and we needed to sort of figure out how we could make it as motivating for hippie as it is for any one of our other dogs so we we found a few simple little sort of tweaks that we do with our training and when we'd use those uh, tug toys or interactive toys that uh, were really helpful for hippie First off, we wouldn't give her access to those toys all the time. It was really important that we had some toys that were special for her that we'd only bring out when we wanted to, you know, play tug. Or yeah, or... so she had access to things that they, she could chew on, like lie down and chew on independently of us, whether it was a bone or a Kong with treats in it or any type of toy that we would be 100% confident that if she laid and chewed on it, she wasn't going to get hurt. But also in addition to that, because we were trying to build her drive with the toys, we didn't really want her to learn to play with those types of toys independently without us. And mm -hmm that she could self-reward by having access to those types of interactive toys all the time. So things like tennis balls or frisbees or tug toys, things like that, we only brought out in scenarios where we knew we were going to be doing it together. For sure. Um, the, uh, the second step was making sure that she won most often. So if I was playing tug, for example, I would make sure that she, she was able to take, to take the toy away from me more often than I would take it away from her. And, and that was something that she started to learn like, oh, if I win with this toy, I get to keep it you know this can be my toy and um, for some dogs that's really not a great behavior that you want to rehearse with them because they certainly feel more empowered by taking the toy away from you but for a dog like hippie or a dog that's not really sure if they love toys it's a great way to motivate them to, to really d want the toy even more stop she is so hyper I know she's right now. In a fit. Stop. she can't be contained she the other thing we did is we experimented with lots of different types of toys to see what she liked best. So she's um, very aware of texture, this dog, so um, she preferred things that were softer. She wasn't as into like the latex types of toys, whereas um, some of our other dogs actually prefer that over, over the softer toys. So she likes softer toys and she really liked toys that she could like get her whole mouth around and her mouth isn't very it's big. Little. So we had to really look for um, toys that were appropriately sized for her because she's so small um, and one of the uh, one of the toys that I ended up finding was this little tiny frisbee that was maybe about this big like smaller than uh smaller than a pancake. It was like really tiny. Depends on what size of pancake. But not Ken's pancakes. Ken's no, pancakes pancake. are like the size of the whole pan. But, um, it was very, very small and it had a little flap in it that you could put food inside of, um, which she loves food, loves, loves food. Yeah. So we found that was really fun and it flew really well. It moved so we could throw it, she could chase it and she loved to bunch it up and hold it inside her mouth and then run around with it. Um, so it was sort of experimenting with different types of toys. Um, that she really liked and uh, then we started to sort of gravitate towards the things that uh, we knew uh, 
she would be more motivated to work for. Mm -hmm. And when we figured out what toy she really loved, we would make it, um, we would really animate that toy. So something that a lot of people do when they're trying to get their dog to play with something is shoving it in their face. Yeah. Well, with a dog like Or Hippie, throwing it and dropping it on the ground and telling the dog to repetitively get it. Yeah, it's just not that exciting. No, dogs don't naturally often have what we call, um, they retrieve a dead toy. So mm -hmm. it's sort of a horrible way of explaining it, but this sort of the phrases that dog trainers use. Yeah. It just means that they have, uh, they throw a toy out and then they just let it drop on the ground and then it's completely still. And you know, you're not really utilizing the dog's natural prey drive when you're sending them to a, a toy that's completely still or an item that's still. So it's much more effective to send them to something that's moving, which is I think why for her, um, like a little tennis ball or a little frisbee was great because it would be in motion as we were sending her to it. Or another thing that we did quite a lot is we would put a toy on um, a rope or a leash yep. and then I would drag it around everywhere and just as she was about to get close to grab it, I would whip it in a different direction a few times just to make her a little crazy. And then of course, as, as Ken mentioned earlier, once we would let her get it, we would let her win and we would like just make her, you know, make it a big deal and she, she would prance around like she was like so cool. And um, that for her was was really rewarding and she loved that style of play with the, with the item being so active. For sure, because keep in mind, this is all about motivation. This isn't about the toy. We're just making her excited for the, whatever the thing is that we choose. And in that instance, it was a toy. Actually, one time when Kale went away, um, probably to some... Uh, I think I was teaching a seminar. Teaching a seminar or something. She issued me a challenge, and that was to get a Hippie to retrieve this tiny little Frisbee. And mm -hmm. uh, my goal for the four or five days that Kale was away, to get uh, Hippie reliably retrieving this Frisbee. And it, it, she and I spent a lot of time... I have good training technique for Ken, because as soon as I say I have a challenge for you... He is immediately on it. It's too bad she doesn't issue it. How many cookies can you eat challenge? More often. <laughs> but in this instance, it was to get Hippie to retrieve the little Frisbee. So what I did, I, I knew that it was going to take repetition. But I know that Hippie's tolerance for, you know, working something for too long is it's pretty low. So I broke that down into short, sweet uh, play sessions that were a couple of minutes long, keeping her really high and really excited about that toy. But I would throw the frisbee out you know four or five times making sure she was really excited about it every single time and then I just break it off and I take that frisbee away and she wouldn't get it again until we had our next play session and what I found with her is I could start to tell when she just wasn't as enthusiastic so that would I would immediately stop the uh, exercise at that point and then the next time I plan to have a little training session I would stop maybe if it were four times the first time and on the fourth she didn't retrieve with you know really excited and really speedy then I'd only do three the next time that way I keep her really excited about the exercise and really excited about the toy. So keep those uh, sessions really short and sweet and make sure that your dog is loving every moment of it before you end it. Now, as you guys may know, Ken and I own lots of dogs, lots of different dogs. And uh, another technique that I have used in the past and actually used with Hippie specifically is I utilize the other dogs in the pack to teach her to be a better tugger. And I have a lot of students say to us, oh, my dog tugs really well when they're playing with the other dogs, but then won't tug with me. And um, my suggestion for that is to not allow your dog to play tug with the other dogs if you're having issues yourself being able to engage your own dog. Because a lot of dogs will bond to your other dog and then they'll game, figure the game is fun with them and they don't really care about doing it with you. So I didn't allow Hippie to play tug um, with my other dogs until she was tugging with me more reliably. And then as I started to sort of reinforce that rule, um, it actually started to work in my advantage because if I was tugging with Hip and all of a sudden she kind of got a little bit over it, I would immediately start tugging with another dog and she's a pretty, has a very competitive nature about her, um, you know, with her running and her racing and things like that. So very quick quickly she started to put two and two together that is if she stopped playing with me I was going to tug with another dog and that made her very jealous and I started to notice that when I would start to look like I was going to play with another dog she would grab the toy again and start shaking it like a death shake yes yeah. you missy little cute little mohawk girl and it's less intimidating sounding when you see a yeah, toy poodle it's doing quite a death adorable shake. Yeah. Um, but that worked really really well because she didn't want the other dogs to have fun she started to learn that if she skipped out on our little session together that someone else was going to get some fun and and uh, she was gonna miss out and uh, that 
that really got a much more um, intense type of uh, tug and play uh, sure. with her and uh, it worked really well. Now obviously only good if you have multiple dogs but um, that definitely was a trick that I think um, made a big difference. Another thing that is important to remember is that each dog is different and um, you know Hippie's our first toy poodle. Uh, we have Border Collies and Ken has a lab that's super into toys and, and you know and mixed breeds. Yeah mixed breeds and mm -hmm. all have been very different with toys all have been fairly motivated to tug and and um, she she likes the toys as well. She never disliked them, but she just didn't really know how to interact with them. Yeah. But a lot of that came down to us not knowing how to interact with her when it came to the toys. I was used to coming from my last dog, you know, Grand Slam. He will almost take your arm off tugging. He's so into it. Yeah. And, you know, when I first started tugging with her, I was tugging, you know, really aggressively. And I think she was like, oh my gosh, that was like way too much. So I tried different techniques of interacting. And what I actually found through trial, trial and error is that one of her favorite things is to, to do is to have the toy in her mouth and uh, prance around with it or even when I scratch her and sort of tickle her while she holds and holds the toy in her mouth to her that is just as rewarding as you know slam finds tugging on the toy really aggressively yeah. so um, you know not every dog needs to be super intense with the way that they interact with the toy with you some dogs like that some dogs don't you know they're all different and it's important to try different things until you see something that works um, you know that that's what makes uh, you a good dog trainer and that's what allows you to have success with lots of different types of dogs, I think. For sure. And when you talked about Hippie, uh, you know, scratching her bum while she's holding a toy, it accomplishes the same purpose, really, because it allows you to use a toy for whatever skill you're working on. It allows you to have an engaging, um, you know, um, session or you know that moment is, is about you and the dog uh, is so I mean it accomplishes all the things that you'd want uh, whether it's by tugging with the dog or playing with the toy you know it accomplishes it accomplishes all those things and that's really what you're after and again this session is not about you it's about your dog it's yeah. about how rewarding they find what you're doing and you certainly can teach you know dogs to tug and you can teach dogs to play you can teach your dog to do basically anything if you have the right motivators and the yeah. right you know the right information but not not all dogs find it internally rewarding. You have to. <laughs> she almost caught that fly. Um, you have to. <laughs> you have to figure out what exactly works for that dog. So. Um, you know, not going back to what I said before, not everything is exactly the same. And uh, something that worked well for your last dog might not be great for this next dog that you have. And that's a really important thing to remember when you're trying to break through with a problem. It's a little more difficult than you'd think to get all the dogs to just. All hang out on top of one another, basically. You probably can't even see Funky. Yeah, Funky's hiding behind Rat, <laughs> and everybody's just waiting for some sort of release command. It seems they're not in that. They're not out of that agility mindset. I really yet. don't know how they have any energy left because I trained all three of them like a lot. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see the footage from Agility. I hope you guys learned something uh, a little bit about uh, tugging and, and playing with toys. Uh, if your dog doesn't naturally love toys, but on that note, after doing uh, lots of awesome stuff with our dogs, I want to remind you to do something awesome with your dog today. Happy training. Nice.